Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a daily reading for the weekend. Yeah, this is your weekend edition. So Friday, February 1st through Sunday, February 3rd. We are officially in February, guys. Woo! <laughs> Time is moving right along, yes? So uh, this is a general energy reading. Okay, so first of all, it's a general reading. Take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Second, um, this is general energy. Okay, so we're not talking love specific, science specific, career specific. We're not talking about anything specific, okay? These are just the messages that spirit has for us that this is just what spirit wants to discuss with us for this weekend, okay? So before I go any further, um, I just want to mention that um, I, that song that came through yesterday. Uh, it's a Katy Perry song. If you haven't if you haven't seen yesterday's morning coffee, it's titled "Upgrading from a Page to a Night." It's for the thirty first of January. Um, if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. Um, but then also I posted the song on my Facebook page so that you guys can hear it if you want to. But see, it's so funny because I had that, I had been channeling that song all week. It would, it would, I would wake up in the morning and it would be playing in my head and I never really acknowledged it until yesterday. And as soon as I acknowledged it, it changed because this morning, <laughs> This morning, I got two songs, and so I've learned that I'm just going to talk about it because, it honestly, this is very much a collective thing that I'm channeling that we're all going through right now, okay? Um, so this next song is also off of that same album, and it's funny because even um, with the first song, Save As Draft, it was, it was a combination of that song with this other song called... Um, Good, miss you more and it's just a follow-up it's <sighs> I don't know I'm, I don't think I'm gonna post that one but <laughs> it's basically so the, the hook is I miss you more than I love you um, so this is a continuation of that same message that was coming through with uh, what's the what's the first one what was the first one um, save as draft okay but then also <laughs> <laughs> the first song, I, oh, and my ears ringing on my left side. The first song that played in my head, actually, like literally, as soon as I woke up this morning, is Mariah Carey's Dream Lover. Now, okay, I'm going to say this. I've been listening to Witness lately because I came across it ran very, very much randomly. Um, oh, last week it was. And if you guys remember, I was talking about, it was not, maybe last Thursday? Was it last Thursday or was it the week before? I don't really remember. I think it was last Thursday, but I had gotten home and gotten to bed and had this massively ugly crying fit. Like it was a super ugly cry. If you've been following me for some time and you know, if you've been keeping up with what's going on, you've heard me say that, you've heard me mention that. And that was right after, and right after that was when I reconnected with Witness. Katy Perry's Witness album and that album was very 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 transformative for me when I was going through a, a major transformation and it was it resonated so well with me like almost every song on that album resonated with what I was going through at the time that it came out which was like around the summer of 2017 and so after that massive crying fit that I went that 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 that, that massive purgy ugly cry thing that happened I think it was two weeks ago now. Um, Betsy and I were actually talking because Betsy of Fearless Intuition, because she was feeling a lot of the same energies. I mean, a lot of us were going through the same stuff. And so we were talking about it and like sharing what we were experiencing, which was very, very similar. And then later that night, it was really late. And then later that night, I came across that song. Uh, the album again, but it wasn't even like Witness, the album Witness. I'm sorry, this is a really long intro, but I want to explain this to you guys. Um, it wasn't a very popular song. It wasn't one of the songs that you would say, oh, well, whatever, it, it makes sense that I would come across that album because it was, or at least that song, because it was a popular song which, and thus the album. But it was one of the uh, more obscure songs off that album that I came across, which, and I don't remember which one it was now. It might have been Save as Draft. No. 
No, I think it was Mind Maze. It was Mind Maze off that album. Anyway, which so then that got me back into the album. So I say all that to say, it's not so crazy or weird that um, this Katy this Katy Perry song would be you know channeling through me or coming to my mind because I have been listening to the album. But there are plenty of songs on that album, you know what I mean? And all of last week, I was channeling energies of reconciliation or wanting to reconcile it in some way, so it was quite fitting. Okay, fine. But then this morning, Dream Lover comes into my head, and I haven't listened to that song, let alone any sort of Mariah Carey music, in the longest time. Like, I... I I like Mariah, but she's not someone that I would go to, you know? I have plenty of, I have a really good friend who loves her, listens to her all the time. I haven't even spoken to him in months, okay? <laughs> so, so I say all that to say, yesterday, in yesterday's reading, um, we were, I was channeling an energy of leaving the past behind associated with this energy of where, um, uh, a save as draft and now this song miss you more if you want to check it out go ahead and find it it's, it's on YouTube it's off her witness album it's called miss you more um, so we're moving away from that energy and we're moving towards someone new and fitting we have miss you more coming through today but then also with dream lover coming through today I mean and then actually while I was laying in bed trying to decipher what was going on as I woke up um, it was, it became a combination of dream lover and fantasy. <laughs> I swear to you guys, I haven't heard any of those, those, those songs in a long time. Okay, I don't even listen to Mariah Carey like that. And I'm not saying she's bad. I love her. I love her music. And those are two of my favorite songs of hers, but I haven't heard them in ages, okay? So it's something, something's happening, y'all. All right. So enough of my long-winded crazy intro let's get into the energies of today now i wanted to mention that to you guys because i had been resisting bringing forward that message coming through in um the katy perry music and so now that i did that immediately the, the reading came out associated with that and then this morning the songs changed i'm just going to work i'm just going to mention it because i am picking up on on collective energies okay so it's for all of us it's not just for me wait what am i doing i have to here we go guys i'm all over the place here we go hi spirit please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved Please bring forward the best messages for the weekend of February 1st through February 3rd. Thank you so much, Spirit. So as soon as I'm connecting with the energies of February, it's all pink. It's all pink. Now, I understand that Valentine's Day is a Hallmark holiday, or what we can consider to be a Hallmark holiday, but that's very much, it's very much um, rooted into our collective consciousness, so it's translating <laughs> into rosy pink energy, which is nice. Um, and honestly, the first thing I wanna tell you is to use that energy to love yourself in more ways than you have in the past, okay? You don't have to have somebody else in your life to enjoy the loving energies of this month. You don't. Because you could totally, you could totally be your own Valentine, okay? Totally be your own Valentine. <laughs> Yep, and then Dream Lover is playing in my head. All right, all right, cool. One more shuffle. <laughs> this is funny, you guys. One more shuffle. And um, kind of get into it. I'm gonna, I do wanna say though, honestly, a lot of us are moving forward towards a greater union, a greater alignment, um, because we have been doing a lot of this work in loving ourselves. So congratulations, yeah? Let's see what we've got. Weekend edition, February 1st, Page of Pentacles, yep. February 1st through the 3rd, weekend edition. February 1st through the 3rd. Thank you so much, Spirit. Oh, goodness. You see, this is exactly what I'm talking about here. Take it. All right. 
That's enough. Okie dokie. Underneath the deck we... Good golly, Miss Molly. We've got the lovers underneath the deck. Look, guys, this is exactly what, I was, what I've been talking about, what I've been picking up on. Yes, look, you have the Ten of Swords and the Four of Wands. Wait, hold on. Let me, I, let me turn my light up. I want this a little bit to be a little bit brighter. Brighter for you. Okay, so let me do this again because I want you guys to see it with the better light. You have the Lovers. All right, the Lovers is underneath the deck. That's the theme of the weekend, or at least of the reading. What Spirit wants to talk to us about, and there's something else that wants to pop up under there. But then you have the Ten of Swords and the Four of Wands. All right? There's, you really, really come far, guys. We really have, okay? We've surmounted a serious obstacle. And what this is saying to me is whatever it is you went through over this last cycle um, has really put you in a, a situation where you are way more grounded, way more stable, way more secure, okay? You have a really great foundation. All right, you have the Page of Pentacles here with, what else? Oh, beautiful. Wow, you have the Page of Pentacles with the Ace of Wands, the Ace of Cups, and the Seven of Cups. Now, the Seven of Cups has been coming out quite a bit lately, um, but this time it feels good. There are a plethora of options out here, okay? Wow, guys. Wow. Okay, um, but the reason why, now this is why the Seven of Cups feels good to me, is because the reason why the options are there or there's a plethora of options, it's because you have well, it's both of them, really. You have this full cup, this full cup of love for yourself. Or you're working on, with, the, with this combination between the Ace of Wands and the Ace of Cups, you're either very, very inspired because your cup is full, or you're inspired to fill your own cup. All right? Now, you have, you, you see, you have that reality, which then leads you to your eyes being open to the possibilities possibilities are endless so this is not a situation where it's like you're you're surrounded by a bunch of illusion or a bunch of options and you have to choose carefully because there could be a toxic cup now i'm not saying there is something that there there may not be something that you know wouldn't be the best for you but that's less of a concern right now because what's more of a concern is you number one recognizing that the worst is over Ten of Swords. The worst is over, and you've surmounted it quite well. This is your own inner union, because the Four of Wands is a union card. Yes, the Four of Wands can talk about marriage. It can talk about your home, um, your foundation, your stability. Uh, and especially with the lovers here, that is a divine union. So what's happened is through this heart, through whatever this difficult situation was for you, okay, you could have been dealing with... Um, coming out of some sort of toxic uh, relationship, narcissistic relationship, the lovers, we could be talking twin flames. Um, and ultimately, you know, if we are talking twin flames, the twin flame journey is not what everyone thinks it is. Yes, there is a possibility. There are plenty of couples or plenty of individuals that have met their actual twin and have come into union. But that's really not what the end goal is. That's basically just the icing on the cake, all right? Um, what's what the end goal is really the end goal really is to find union within find union with source actually is what spirit just said find union with source and then continue on your mission of spreading love and light and and reconnecting the human race with the heart chakra okay with love for the self and for the for for humanity for the the collective so you've surmounted this energy this this tough difficult situation you have a great foundation you either have found or are in the process of gaining union within with the lovers and that is helping attract someone into your life page of pentacles the page of pentacles has been coming the page of pentacles actually came out last night in the uh, energy reading for 
the collective. I believe it was here on YouTube. I can't remember because I was on I was live on Instagram and then I came to YouTube and did happy hour. But someone is trying someone. You're attracting someone into your life. The more the more you focus on your grounding, your stability and your full cup of love appreciating yourself for who you are, loving yourself for who you are, not caring what others have to say about your life, your lifestyle, this, that, and the third, but, lo but, but doing what it is you know is right for you and, sh and, and carrying your torch, somebody is going to be able to, re to, to reciprocate that. Ace of Wands, Ace of Cups. Interesting, because I just got some sort of marriage proposal from that. I literally just saw somebody somebody being interested or in um, somebody being influenced or inspired to propose in some way. That could be far off down the road. That could be coming from this person here, this, eight, this page of pentacles that um, wants to get to know you is what I'm hearing. Wants to make you some sort of offer. Wants to start from the ground up, you know, start with a friendship and move it forward. So that could be later on down the road. Because the lovers, with the lovers in the Four of Wands, you could be talking about some sort of proposal, marriage, especially with the Page of Pentacles. Mm -hmm. So it really, this is really is a situation where dream. You could be singing "Dream Lover" by Mariah Carey. But you see, dreams, fantasy, Seven of Cups. You see, this is not a situation where. You're in a codependent energy and you're just waiting for someone to swoop you off your feet for your life to begin. That is not how this works here. Because you have, and that's part of why the Seven of Cups energy feels so good. Because you're past that illusion now. You have your own full cup of love and your own inspiration to move forward in your own direction in life. That is what's going to bring this in. Page of Pentacles. Okay? That union that you found here with the lovers, that union within is what's going to be reflected in a relationship outside of you. Oh, what's under the lovers here? <laughs> the Ten of Cups. Mm, 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 mm. I'm just going to leave that there. <sighs> oh, I forgot to mention, I'm going to be at Om Shanti today from 11 a.m. to 5, 5 p.m. Yeah, but we're going to get some clarification now. Honestly, guys, with the Ten of Swords, the Four of Wands, and the Page of Pentacles, someone cannot come in and offer you something, cannot start something new with you if you're still holding on to the baggage of the past, if you're still holding on to the energies of this Ten of Swords, okay? But I don't see what that is. I, or I don't see that happening. I see definitely the baggage has been released, and it's almost as if... You're in a happy-go-lucky state here with the Four of Wands just kind of like skipping along into your new existence, which is beautiful. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to clarify. We're going to clarify the Ten of Swords, the Four of Wands, and the Page of Pentacles. I'm going to do... We're going to get one more shuffle. Oh, and um, just a heads up, there's a garbage truck coming. <laughs> So you're going to hear that in a few moments if you don't already, actually. All right, here we go. We're going to clarify this top row here. Four of Swords. I'm sorry, Ten of Swords, Four of Wands, and the Page of Pentacles. Best messages, please, Spirit. Please clarify. The Sun and Death. Oh, boy. Oh. 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 The Queen of Swords. Ouch. Underneath the deck, you have the Knight, the Knight of Pentacles. In this deck, uh, pages are unicorns, knights are griffins, like this. This is a griffin. Uh, queens are phoenixes, and the kings are dragons. This is the epic tarot, um, and you can get this at Om Shanti. 
they have it online or in store and they do ship. Yes, hashtag support small businesses, y'all. Okay. So check it out. Basically, this situation here represented by the Ten of Swords taught you how to be the Queen of Swords. She didn't see queens or phoenixes in this deck. Taught you how to be a Queen of Swords. And so you cut the bullshit. You said, I'm cutting out the shit in my life that has no... Hmm. I wanted to say meaning, but it does, it's not like it doesn't have meaning. It has meaning, but it's not the meaning that you thought it was. The meaning or the value is that it taught you how to cut away the toxic stuff, how to cut away all the shit that wastes your time. The Queen of Swords is an energy of logic, okay? The Queen of Swords is an air sign. Um, the, the swords suit uh, are, is the air suit, okay? The, the, and that is the suit of the mind and communication and thought. The Queen of Swords doesn't fuck around. As soon as she recognizes that something does not resonate with her, something is not healthy for her, she doesn't want to be a part of something, she literally just cuts it out, okay? Air signs... Um, being Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. She literally just cuts it out. No ifs, ands, or buts. She doesn't want to have a conversation about it. She just knows it doesn't work for her. It doesn't fit her. She doesn't want to waste her time any longer, so she's just going to cut it out and move on. Now, she can be very malicious. She can be when she's negatively aspected. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the fact that this Ten of Swords situation, the ending or the completion of a really rough, toxic cycle has taught you how to be the queen of swords. And because of that, you've got some really great foundation, four of wands. Like this is definitely cause for celebration. And this card does have a celebratory energy to it. But to that point, this is not a time to rest on your laurels because things, you still have work to do, okay? But you're at a great, you have, you've gotten off to a really great start. And you've transformed here. Like, whoa. There's the devil and the sun. You've transformed. And because of this transformation, you've got something coming in. An offer. A commitment. Now, it's moving slowly. So like I said, someone is, someone is entering, going to be, is either going to be entering your life or is entering your life already. But they're moving very slowly. They're being methodical about it. And that's exactly what this old, this past situation has taught you. Step by step, piece by piece, inch by inch, mile by mile. It's gonna start it's starting out as a friendship first, guys, but that's okay. Alright? That's beautiful. Okay, so now let's get into the second row here. Ace of Wands, Ace of Cups, Seven of Cups. Please clarify, Spirit. Two of Wands. Alright. On the Ace of Wands. That's really interesting. Here we go. Oh, oh my God. Underneath the deck now is the Knight of Swords. Okay. Ooh, what does that mean? Well, the Knight of Swords is about communication. Okay. Um, but he can be aggressive. Very much a shoot first, ask questions later type of situation. Um, it could be... Hold on. This was upright when it first came out, but now it's turned reverse. I get it. Um, the Knight of Swords uh, is very can be a very volatile energy, but here what this is talking about, this is talking about communication, okay? Wanting to communicate really wanting to communicate like the i guess the aggression that i'm feeling is like this diet this desire to like communicate with someone talk to them get to know them um that kind of thing it's not an energy of the knight of wands now the knight of wands would be the other fastest knight in the deck other than the knight of swords okay the knight of wands but the knight of wands can be sexual energy it's like a, a, like the energy of a one night stand blah 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 that's not this one. This one is mental in, in nature. So this is wanting to communicate. 
conversate, whatever. The two of wands fell out on the ace of wands here. Okay, so trying to decide how to proceed, how to move forward. You definitely have, look, because the ten of cups came out again. But the ten of cups came out in reverse this time. But it came out with the six of cups. The ten of cups in reverse is all this is saying is you have potential here. But it's not quite ready yet. Why? Because there's some work that needs to be done. Eight of pentacles. Eight of pentacles is about putting in the hard work. Okay? The... The mundane labor, I guess, you know, the, the, the craftsmanship. Often this card is depicted as somebody creating or crafting eight identical pentacles. Okay, so it's the it's the step by step process, the work that needs to be put in to achieve a goal. And that all of that is helping the seven of cups feel much better. This is why the seven of cups feels better, feels good this time, because you have a plethora of ways that you can do this. Okay? Many different avenues to go on, which actually is represented by the two of wands now, right? Figuring out which way you want to go, how you want to take this, how do you want to approach this? But with the six of cups, the six of cups is, talks about soulmates. It talks about the past. This could be someone from your past. Don't freak out, okay? If someone is from your past that you really don't want coming back, don't worry about it. You don't, even if they were to come back, you don't have to accept them back. But this is either somebody from your past, maybe someone that you knew a while ago, but you know you guys just never got anything off the ground. Maybe it's, I heard for some of you it's someone from childhood, but it's also some, someone from a past life, a soulmate situation from a past life for many of you. Now, if it's not from a past life, because it actually it doesn't really have to be, um, it's just someone that you have a really deep soulmate connection with, someone... This could, and honestly, I'm really feeling like this could be a really good friend, someone that really, you really identify with, you really connect with on an inner child level. You, you're, you, you are into a lot of the same things. Um, you want the same things out of life. You want to experience similar things out of life. This is a serious companion, and it's either going to be, because I'm, I'm feeling this very strongly right now, it's either going to be a long-term friendship that really has staying power, and you meet someone through that, or this person is a long turns into is a friendship that turns into a lasting relationship. But you because you do have the Ten of Cups here, you have it twice over underneath the deck and here. But here it's reversed. But that's just because we're clarifying, and it's just saying that there's work that needs to be done. But the potential, the potential, is there. You just have to do the work. Eight of Pentacles. But the potential is here. The Ten of Cups is here. It's just a little blocked at the moment. Woo. Well, that sure is beautiful, guys. All right, we're going to get some Oracle Guidance now. And we're going to start with the Animal... We're going to start with the Animal Spirit Guides, and then we're going to move to the Crystal Mandala deck, okay? Here we go. Thank you so much, Spirit. Best messages for this weekend. Friday, February 1st to Sunday, February 3rd. Let's get it. Let's get it. Best messages, please, Spirit. Wolf. Ew. Ooh, underneath the deck is Hawk. And I want to read that, actually. All right, we're going to start with Hawk. Watchful, all-seeing, messenger of divinity. The sharp eye of the hawk, the sharp eyes, excuse me, of the hawk watch our every move. This keen-eyed bird has the ability to see every little detail as well as the bigger picture. When this card appears, fate has its eyes on you and the wings, I'm sorry, and the winds are shifting. It is said that the hawk carries news upon its wings and is sent from divinity itself to deliver it. 
The message should not be taken lightly. Though it may seem small or insignificant, it will eventually redirect your course. When in balance, Hawk sees clearly and is intuitive. When out of balance, Hawk sees too much and is suspicious. To bring into balance, one needs to change their perspective. But honestly, you've already really gone through that, to be quite honest. And that's what's allowing your situation to change, okay? Finally, we have Wolf. I love wolves. I absolutely, I'm a huge dog person, um, huge dog person. Like I love dogs and I love wolves too. Like I wouldn't, I don't know if I would try to domesticate a wolf. Obviously that's going to be a bit of a challenge and probably not the wisest idea, but I still love them. They're such beautiful creatures. Okay, here we go. Wolf, guardian of family and tribe, activism, ritual. The wolf's mission is to uphold the well-being and longevity of the pack. Healthy wolf energy expresses itself through activism, mentorship, humanitarian efforts, or teaching, religious or political studies. The wolf gets into trouble when it assumes every member of the tribe must follow suit. This includes children walking in their parents' footsteps. Although it will surely be uncomfortable at first, practicing tolerance helps balance out agitated wolf energy. Contemplate the following. Embrace all, exclude none. When in balance, wolf is reliable, democratic, and fearless. When out of balance, wolf is judgmental and dominating. To bring into balance, one must practice letting go. I'm going to leave that one as it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Closing message now from the Crystal Manzala deck. Alrighty. Closing message, please, Spirit. For the weekend edition, Friday, February 1st through Sunday, February 3rd. There we go. Crossroads of Destiny. Ooh, Integrity is at the bottom of the deck. That's a beautiful card. Look at that. Okay. Crossroad of Destiny. Goddess Hecate and Mika. Here we go. We bring you the empowerment of the crossroad of destiny. You are at a pivotal point on your life journey. It may be obvious to you with a potential life-changing decision before you, or you may not realize the impact that an, op that an apparently insignificant choice is going to have on your future. Either way, you are at a point where you can leave the past be behind and chart your course for a new adventurous chapter to begin in your life. This is not something you need to be frightened of. It is a sign you are progressing on your path. The crossroad of destiny happens when you have mastered a cycle in your life and a new cycle is before you. It is an opportunity that you can take best advantage of by listening to your heart. And I just saw 3333 33 on the counter. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you all have a great day. Um, and if you're in the New York City metro area, come by and see me. I'm going to be at Om Shanti Bookshop today on 14th Street between 11, uh, between, uh, 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Um, it's on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. Uh, the link to their website is in the description box of the video below. And if you would like a personal reading, go ahead and email me. Yes, all of the readings that I offer are in the description box. And I hope you guys, you guys have a great day and a great weekend. And I'll see you at least on Sunday for the Twin Flame reading. It's not going to be live. It's going to be recorded. But yeah, I'll probably see you tomorrow too. You know, I'll probably go do something live sometime. Something, something, something. A little something, something. Okay. I love you guys. <laughs> have a great one. Bye.